Welcome to this video. Today I will be going over steps that you can take to help optimize your computer and help it run more efficiently, or in other words, to help speed up your computer. Now, yes, I am doing this on Windows 10, but this will also work for Windows 8 and Windows 7 users because the steps are basically the same. Please be aware that I will be listing all of the steps down below in the notes down in the video description, as well as any important links will also be listed down below, so please follow along down below in those notes. Now when it comes to your computer speed, there's the software side and then there's the hardware side. Now of course there's also the internet, but we're not talking about internet speed. That's a completely different beast. We're just talking about the computer itself. And so it comes down to the computer software and the computer hardware. Now first we're going to talk about what you can do about the software side and then towards the end of this video we'll talk about computer hardware. So for step number one, what you'll do is come down to the start menu and just type in control panel and go ahead and open up the control panel. And then up here in the top right corner, type in performance. And you'll notice an option right here that says adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Click on that option. And what you'll want to do is I would recommend go ahead and uncheck every single box here except for smooth edges because if you uncheck this one, things become a little bit difficult to read. If you want to uncheck everything, you can, but I do recommend at least checking this box. But everything else, go ahead and turn those off and then make sure you hit apply and then OK. For step number two, you're just going to right click on your desktop and go to personalize. And then over here on the left hand side, go to colors. And then down a little bit to where it says transparency effect, we're going to turn this off. Now, right now, I do want to say some of these settings may seem minor, like they're just insignificant little settings. But please keep in mind, we're going to make a lot of little setting changes. And all of these are going to add up to a significant increase in performance. Now, step number three is going to be exclusive to Windows 10 users. So if you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8, you can skip this step. But for the rest of you using Windows 10, You'll come down to the Start menu and type in Settings. And then you'll just want to go, uh, go ahead and open up the Settings menu. And then come over here to Privacy. Go ahead and click on it. And down the left-hand column, if you scroll down, there's an option that says Background Apps. This is a list of everything that's running in the background of your computer. I would recommend turning off as much here as you can. Uh, pretty much you should be able to turn off pretty much everything. The only thing I usually leave on is this one right here that has to do with Windows Defender because it has to do with the security. But everything else I would recommend that you go ahead and turn off. If there is something here that you absolutely need, you can leave it on. But again, please try to turn off as much here as you can. Now once you've finished going through this list, uh, I would also recommend going back to the left hand column and look for where it says act, uh, activity history. Go ahead and click on that. You'll notice there's a box here that's checked that says let Windows collect my activities from this PC. Not only is this a privacy concern, but it runs in the background. So by unchecking it, we can minimize the amount of uh, data that's being collected in the background to help increase performance here as well. I would also recommend going to the diagnostic and feedback and just make sure that you have basic selected to help minimize the amount of information that again is being sent to and from your computer in the background. For step number four, we want to go through and make sure we remove all and any malware off of the computer. This includes trojans, viruses, worms, all of that needs to be removed off the computer. And malware is a very common uh, culprit as far as a computer slowing down when it comes to software. So if you go down below into the notes down in the video description, you'll notice there's some links there. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, Malwarebytes. This is a free program that you can run to remove malware off of your computer. And once you've downloaded and installed it, you will want to come over here to Settings and just make sure underneath uh, Protection that you have the Rootkit option turned on because we do want to scan uh, for Rootkits. And then you'll come back over here to the Dashboard on the left-hand side. And right here where it says Updates, just click there to make sure that the definitions are up to date. And then you can go ahead and click on Scan Now, and this will scan your computer for any malware. Now, if it does find anything, it will give you the option to remove it. Uh, go ahead and do so. And then after you remove any results that are found, make sure you restart the computer before you continue on because those results will not be fully removed until after you have restarted the computer. Now, 
After you have restarted the computer, you'll then go back down to the notes and download the second uh, anti-malware program, which is Super Anti-Spyware. After you've downloaded and installed it, you'll get a, a menu like this. Just first come right here where it says check for updates to again make sure it is up to date with the latest definitions. And then you'll go over here to scan this computer and do a complete scan. And then same thing, once it's uh, finished, it will give you any results, if any are found, it will give you the option to remove them. And then after you remove them, make sure you restart the computer because again, they are not fully removed until after the computer restarts. I would not recommend running these programs at the same time like I'm doing because chances are if you're watching this video, your computer's slow. If you run both of these at the same time, your computer's gonna run very, very slow. So do not run them at the same time. Run them one at a time. First malware bytes, restart the computer, then move on to Super Anti-Spyware and restart the computer again. Now, after you have finished with both Malwarebytes and Super Anti-Spyware, you will want to open up your antivirus program. If you're a Windows 10 user, I do recommend using Windows Defender. However, if you are in Windows 7 or Windows 8, I will list a link down below in the notes for a bunch of free antivirus programs that you can use. You can even use it on Windows 10 if you would like to, but generally I do recommend just using Windows Defender for Windows 10 because it runs lighter on the computer. Now, whichever antivirus you are using, go ahead and open it up, and you'll need to locate where the update option is to make sure your antivirus program is up to date. And after you have verified that your antivirus program is up to date, you will want to locate the full system scan option and go ahead and run a scan. And just like with the first two scans we ran, if it does find any results, it will give you the option to remove them. And then after you uh, remove them, you will want to again restart the computer and please be aware that these three scans, your antivirus scan, Malwarebytes, and Super Anti-Spyware, will cover the majority of you because those three scans will find the majority of malware that can be removed off of a computer. However, some of you may be dealing with a highly infected computer, and so for those of you who just want to be thorough or want some additional free options, you will want to run uh, this one from Zamana, which is an anti-malware program, great at disinfecting highly infected computers. You can also use Hitman Pro, which does not have a free version, but it does have a 30-day free trial that you can use. And then you can also use ADW Cleaner, which targets adware. And so you can also run these three programs. But again, the ones I've already mentioned should cover the majority of you. Now for step number five, we need to go through and clean out our web browsers. And so I'm going to start with Google Chrome. And so what you'll want to do is come up to the top right corner and click on the three little dots and go down to More Tools and then over to where it says Extensions. Now, not only are extensions a privacy risk and a security risk, they can also very much slow your web browser down. And so what you want to do here is remove any and all extensions that you can. And so even if it's a legitimate extension from a legitimate company, I strongly recommend removing it because it will help increase performance. And so you will notice there's a remove button here that we can click on to remove uh, these extensions. Now. If there is an extension that you absolutely cannot part ways with, you just click on this little uh, blue switch that will disable it, so it at least will not be running in the background. With Google Chrome, I would recommend just getting it down to these four extensions. And then if we move on to Firefox, what we'll want to do is come up here to the top right corner and click on the menu and go down to Add-ons. And then just make sure Extensions is selected on the left-hand side. Again. I recommend removing any and all extensions that you possibly can. If there's one that you absolutely cannot part ways with, at least disable it so it's not running in the background. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Remove to remove it. One other thing I would check with Firefox is Plugins. If I click on the Plugins option over here, it will list uh, the plugins that you have on your Firefox web browser. Over here, there is an option for some of them to change it to Ask to activate. So that way it's not always uh, running in the background. If it doesn't have the option for ask to activate just leave it as is but if it does I would recommend changing it to ask to activate again to help minimize it running in the background moving on to Microsoft Edge again we're going to click on the menu in the top right corner and then we're going to go down to extensions uh, same rule I do recommend removing as many extensions here as possible all of them if possible but if you can't you can disable it by turning it off to remove it we just click this little gear icon and then we click on uninstall to remove it completely off of the 
Edge web browser. Now for step number six, we want to remove any and all junk programs off of our computer. And so we're going to come down here to the start menu and type in control panel. And we're just going to go ahead and open up the control panel. And then we're going to come over here to programs and then programs and features. And this will give us a list of all the programs that are on the computer. Now the first thing I would recommend is go through this list and remove the programs we just installed, the anti-malware programs. So for example, you will want to uninstall Malwarebytes, Super Anti-Spyware. If you decide to use uh, Zamana, you'll want to remove that as well. Some additional pointers that I would recommend when you're going through this list or things to keep an eye out for is if you see anything with the word toolbar in it, it absolutely must be removed. Also make sure that you do not have more than one ant antivirus program because that can greatly slow your computer down as well. So again, keep an eye out for that. If you see any sort of registry cleaners or any sort of program that changes uh, claims to be a cleaner, I would strongly rec uh, recommend removing those as well. And then if you come across something on this list and you just don't know what it is, if you go down to the notes below underneath this step, uh, step number six, there is a link to this website called shouldiremoveit.com where you can just type in the name of a program to look it up to see if it's something that you should remove. It will give you a result with either an orange yellow rating or a red rating. If it's yellow, orange, or red, it absolutely must be removed. If it has a green rating, you can keep it. Everything else, you need to remove it. The more things you remove off of this list, the better, because it will help clean up your computer. Now, one additional part of this step for Windows 10 users is I would come down to the menu and type in Settings and open up the Settings menu again and go over here to the Apps menu. The reason why is because there are some things on this menu that will show up that will not show up on the control panel so to be thorough you'll also want to go through this list if you're a Windows 10 user to uninstall something you just click on it and then click uninstall notice that Skype did not show up on this side but it did show up here so again Windows 10 users make sure you look on this list as well now once you've gone through this entire list and removed all of the garbage again make sure that you restart your computer because parts of certain programs do not fully remove until after a computer restart. Now for step number seven, again, go down to the menu and type in msconfig, just like this. And it's gonna bring up the system configuration. You're just gonna right click and go to run as administrator. And then once this window opens up, go to the services tab. And then from here, make sure you check the box that says hide all Microsoft services. Now this is a list of processes that are running in the background of your computer and this can greatly affect the speed or optimization of your computer, especially if this is a long list. So what I would recommend is going through and disabling the items on this list. Now there is something here that you need to keep in mind. If you disable these processes, it can affect certain things. So for example, with Google update, this update or this process right here allows Google to update in the background. By disabling it, it will no longer update in the background. So what I do recommend is periodically, maybe a couple times a month, I would come here and re-enable everything on this list, let them run for a day, so that way if there's anything that needs to update or any sort of maintenance that needs to be done, it can do so. And then after it's done that, after 24 hours, you can come back here and disable it again. So again, just keep that in mind. But for now, we're going to disable these and then we're going to click apply. And then we also want to go to the startup tab and then open up the task manager. If you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8, it's just going to list it here in the startup menu. But here on Windows 10, it's going to give us a list of everything that runs every time we start up the computer. We want to disable as much here as possible so that way it doesn't have as much that it has to start up or run through every time you turn the computer on. Now, if you see anything that has to do with your antivirus program, I would leave that turned on. If you see anything that has to do with an automated online backup service, I would leave that turned on. Or even if you have like a cloud drive, like OneDrive or some sort of a Google Drive, something on the cloud, if you use that daily, you may want to leave that on as well. But everything else... I would disable. Uh, the more you disable here, the quicker your computer will start up and the less it will have to run in the background. So again, make sure you, you are thorough on this list as well. Now, once you've gone through both of these lists, 
you will need to again restart your computer. Now for step number eight, we just wanna come down here and click on the file or folder icon down here at the bottom. And then over here, we wanna click on this PC. If you're on an older computer, it may just say computer, uh, but Windows 10 users will have this PC. And right here, we can see the C drive. We just wanna right click on it and go down to properties. And then over here to tools, and then over here to optimize. Now, right here underneath media type, it will either tell you that you have a solid state drive or it will tell you you have a hard drive. If you have a hard drive, you will want to click optimize so that way it, it can optimize your hard drive because hard drives will, can easily become fragmented and slow down the computer response time. If you have a solid state drive, do not run the optimization because that can be bad for solid state drives. So again, only run this if it says hard drive right here underneath media type. Additionally, if you have a hard drive, I would also recommend turning on the schedule. Uh, I would run it just monthly, uh, so that way you don't have to always remember to come in here and do this. It'll just do it for you. But again, do not turn on the schedule if it says solid state drive. Now that's pretty much all of the settings or steps that you wanna take software wise to improve your computer performance. Now, if you've gone through all of those steps and it's still not performing, uh, performing the way you want it to, at that point, that is when you want to consider reinstalling the operating system. Now, that will erase everything off of the drive and set it back to like when it was new, when you first got it. So you do wanna make sure that you back up any and all files before you do this. Now, the nice thing is if you're on Windows 10, you can actually just come down here to the start menu and type in reset. And then you'll notice there's an option right here that says reset this PC. This is not available on Windows 7 or Windows 8. So if, if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, you will have to uh, completely reinstall uh, the operating system the hard way. But here on Windows 10, we just come over here and click on get started. And it will give you the option here to keep your files where it will try to reinstall the operating system and keep your files on the computer. However, I would still, before you do this, back up anything that's important to you. If you do this option and it's still not running well, then I would come down here to remove everything. So that, just, that way it just wipes everything off, completely reinstalls the operating system, and it will basically be like it was new. Now, if you go through and completely reinstall the operating system and it's still not performing the way that you want it to, the last step that you can take software-wise is consider switching to a different operating system or what I would recommend is switch from Windows to Linux. And the reason why is because Linux can run more efficiently. It can also be lighter on the computer hardware. And so you do have to take a couple things in mind though. One, it's gonna be, a, it, it's gonna be different. So you're gonna to have to kind of learn how Linux works. It doesn't work the same way that uh, Windows does. But the other thing is you wanna make sure that the applications or programs that you use on a daily basis are available to use with Linux. Uh, for example, if all you're doing is just browsing the web, you're just you know checking your email, uh, streaming video, just basically you're sticking within a web browser, then Linux is a great option for you because you can do all of that on Linux. If you're a gamer, however, that's not going to be a great option because a lot of what you do is not going to be available on Linux. Now, if you decide that Linux is an option for you, I do recommend Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it, or you may want to consider Linux Mint. Uh, these two are probably two of the most common or popular versions or distributions of Linux. And I also have done a tutorial video on how to install Linux onto a Windows computer. So I will link the, uh, or I will put the link to that tutorial down below in the notes as well. So that way, if you wanna go this route, you do have that option. Now that's everything that you can do as far as the software. Step number 10 has to do with your options hardware wise. If you've gone through all of that, all of those steps to help optimize your software side of things with your computer and it's still not performing well, or the, at least the way that you want it to, then that means you need to look at the hardware and you will probably be looking to need to upgrade your hardware on your computer. Now there are three categories or three things as far as the hardware on your computer or in your computer that can affect how it performs. It's gonna be your storage drive, the drive in your computer, as well as the RAM and the CPU. 
also known as the processor. It has to be one of those three things. It can be a combination of those three things. It could be all of those three, but it's going to be at least one of those. And so the first thing, let's talk about the drive. If you came over here when you were doing the defrag and it said hard drive, the first thing I would recommend is upgrading to a solid state drive because that is significantly faster than just a regular hard drive. They don't even cost that much anymore. And whether you use a laptop or a desktop, both should have the option to allow you to easily upgrade to an SSD. It's not that difficult to do either. It's probably the easiest upgrade you can do on a computer other than copying over your files. But as far as the installation, is very easy. So the first thing I would consider is if you do have a hard drive in your computer, upgrade it to a solid state drive. Now, if you want to double check to see if it's the RAM or CPU that's impacting the performance of your computer, you'll just want to come to the start menu and type in task manager. And when you open this up, it will give you this window right here on the right hand side. And if we go over here to performance, we can see that it lists the CPU and it also lists the memory. Now, when your computer is running slow, open this up. Take a look at the performance. If the CPU or memory is approaching 100%, then you can know pretty well that that's at least one of the culprits as to why your computer is running slow. And even if it's getting, it doesn't have to be right at 100%. If it's just getting close, if it's above 85% and the computer is running slow, then there's a good bet that it's impacting performance. So for example, right now it's at 3, 1, 4% CPU. I know that my CPU is not impacting my computer performance because it's so low. If this was at 100 right now and my computer was running slow, I would then know that I need to upgrade my CPU. Same thing with the memory or RAM. If it's getting close to 100%, above 85 is where I recommend, then you want to look at upgrading the RAM or memory on your computer. Now of these two, your ability to upgrade either of these is going to depend on your computer. For example, with the memory, this is going to depend on the actual motherboard that's in your computer as to whether or not it supports more RAM. Now, if you want to know how much you currently have, right here it lists how much RAM you currently have in the computer. If I wanted to upgrade this to 8, I would have to double check, actually look inside my computer to see if it has the option to add more physical RAM into the computer. You also want to double check to make sure that the motherboard supports more RAM and you also have to double check to see what kind of RAM it supports because there are different types of RAM. They're not all the same. So I can't give an answer to all of you because everyone's using a different computer. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research as far as what RAM you can put in your computer and how much RAM your computer supports. If your computer needs a CPU upgrade, at this point you may just want to go ahead and buy a new computer because upgrading the CPU can be difficult. If it's a laptop, it's basically not an option. It depends, but usually it's not an option. If it's a desktop, you can pull the motherboard out, put a new motherboard in that supports a new CPU, but going through all of that is kind of, it, it's a lot. If you're going to go to that if you're going to go that route I would just recommend that you just go ahead and buy a new computer buy it with the components that you want I think you'll have a much better experience going that route if it turns out you need to upgrade your CPU so if it's the memory if it's the RAM double check to see how much it can support that is upgradable that's a doable thing if it's the CPU however this is much more difficult to upgrade and at that point I would just recommend looking at buying a new computer I hope this has been helpful if you have any comments or questions please post them down below I will respond as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have a great day.